One underrated piece of equipment that is often overlooked but can have a big impact on your observing experience is the finder scope. People usually don't give much thought when they get one. In fact, the vast majority of us use the one that came with a telescope, never really thinking about upgrading it. Eyepieces or the telescope itself are the items that usually get the most attention when it comes to upgrades. While this is certainly justified, I believe the finder scope that is sitting on top of your telescope deserves some attention as well. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's take a deeper look at the more popular categories of finder scopes on the market today. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. For me, the finder scope is the first item in the optical system that dictates how the observing experience with my telescope is going to be. Since the view through the telescope offers such a narrow field of view compared to the naked eye, a finder scope is essential in aiming and finding specific objects, otherwise we are just wandering aimlessly across the night sky struggling to find the object that we are looking for. A good finder scope should enable its user to comfortably and precisely navigate and locate the desired object in the night sky before the main telescope can take over. There are a few alternatives available today on the market, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Today, I'm going to focus on the more popular types, starting with optical finder scopes. An optical finder scope is a small refractor telescope with an achromatic design. It consists of an optical tube made out of metal with an objective lens element at the front and a smaller magnifying lens at the back. This lens usually has a fine crosshair made out of thin wire threads that help with guiding. There are multiple variations of this design. There are smaller optical finder scopes with 30 mm diameter for the objective lens and a minimal magnification of 6x. There are also bigger and heavier optical finder scopes with 50 mm diameter and 8 or 9 times magnification. Where an entry level finder scope comes with a straight back end, more expensive models come with a diagonal mirror attached to the back, offering a much more convenient way to look through. There are even some versions out there that offer an illuminated crosshair, making it much more visible against the dark background of the night sky. Since they offer a decent magnification, optical finder scopes help find objects with ease. Even smaller and dimmer objects that aren't visible to the naked eye reveal themselves when viewed through this type of finder scope, making them the ideal choice for beginners and advanced users as well. Because they are mostly made out of metal and glass, finder scopes tend to be heavier than reflex sight finders. This should be kept in mind if the telescope that is going to get attached to is rather small. Also, for longer observing sessions, you might need a small dew shield. Optical finder scopes also tend to cost more than their reflex sight counterparts, starting at $50 to $60 for the straight ones and going all the way up to $200 for the premium angled and illuminated ones. The one that I have with me today is an um, 8x50 right angled optical finder scope from Skywatcher and it's my favorite of them all. I love the fact that it offers an 8x magnification and that I don't have to strain my neck every time I want to use it. In my opinion, it's the perfect companion for a Newton or a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. The second type of finder scopes that can be found in shops are reflex sight devices. These work by generating a laser beam using a battery and a small LED, which then gets projected on a small screen, either made out of glass or plastic. In this category, 
two types of reflex sight designs enjoy a great popularity among hobby astronomers. On one hand, we have the Telred design, and on the other hand, the red dot finder. So let's start with the Telred design. Having an instantly recognizable design, the Telred was the brainchild of Stephen Brandt Kaffeld, who designed it in 1977. The acronym Telred stands for Telescope Reflex Aiming Device. Here I have the Omegon version of this design called the Radiant. I got it with my 12 inch ProDub and have been using it ever since. It works by projecting a target onto a glass screen. This target or reticle consists of three concentric circles. The smallest circle in the center has a diameter of 0.5 degrees. The next one has a diameter of two degrees and the third outer circle has a diameter of four degrees. Knowing these exact values helps a lot when navigating the night sky. If you already know where roughly the stars and constellations are, then moving from one object to the next using this finder is very easy because you can simply read the distance to the next object in degrees by looking at the circles. This makes it very helpful for star hopping. Just as with an optical finder scope, the glass screen onto which the reticle is projected is susceptible to dew during longer observing sessions and a dew shield is recommended. Since this type of finders require some knowledge of the night sky to fully utilize their potential, they are rather suited for a bit more advanced users. With a rather bulky format, the Telra design also isn't well suited to be used in combination with smaller telescopes with a diameter of less than four inches. If you want to find out more about the Omegon Radiant, I encourage you to check out my full review. I leave a link in the description below. There is another type of reflex sight finder that is much more suitable for beginners. I'm talking about the red dot finder. Just like its big brother, the Telrad, a red dot finder works by shining an LED laser light on a screen, creating a dot in the middle of it. By aligning this dot with the desired target, you ensure that the telescope is aimed at the object you want to observe. The red dot finder you see here is from Skywatcher and it came with my four inch Mac. Even though it's made completely out of plastic, it's sturdy and easy to adjust. I've been enjoying it very much since I've got it. A red dot finder is much lighter and smaller than a Telrad or an optical finder scope, making it compatible even with the smallest telescopes. Being this compact and light also allows for easy transportation. They are also inexpensive, starting at as little as 15 bucks, making it the ideal finder scope for beginner telescopes. So yeah, this was a short overview of the more popular finder scope categories that you can get today. Now I'm curious to see what type of finder scopes do you guys like to use? Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys next time.